Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all across Canada. Now, on today's episode, we'll be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone who lives there. Today, we are honored to be welcoming from the town of Pickering, Ontario, Councillor Mara Nagy. But before we jump into the today's interview with Councillor Nagy, I just want to make a moment and say thank you. Thank you for tuning in and for being part of the Cross Border Interviews family. Uh, your passion, your desire to learn more about municipal issues is what drives us. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this or watching this because you don't want to miss more great interviews like the one we have today. Now, on to the interview with Councillor Nagy. Uh, Mara, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Greatly appreciate it. It's always great to, as I said, talk to someone from my home community of Durham region. But I, I want to start with the basic question that I've started all my interviews with municipal leaders from across this country with, and you're no exception to that. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Mara? Um. So I, I mean, I grew up in Pickering. We, so I was born in Eastern Europe. We moved to Canada when I was a baby um, and we moved to Pickering when I was about four. So I've lived in Pickering outside of going to university. I've lived in Pickering since 1996. Um, so it's very long time. Um, well, long for me. And uh, I, I just, I, I, I love Pickering. I, it's, grown so much it's changed so much since I was a kid and even before I really had a sense of what I wanted to do in terms of politics in terms of my role within politics um I've always been political my again Eastern Europe right so my family instilled in me the importance of democracy and the democratic vote and standing up for the process and processes, et cetera, et cetera. So between that and my love for the city and my genuine interest in politics outside of all of this, it kind of, it really just kind of all snowballed into a light bulb moment of I'm going to run for office. Now, uh, I, I did a little bit of research on you. I traditionally don't do a lot of in-depth research, but in 2022, you don't just run municipally, you run provincially as well. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I, I want to start with the sort of basic question before we get into what made you put your decide to put your name forward. But you, you talk about how your family were, was sort of political. They told you to get involved, get stand up and be heard and vote and get involved in the democratic process. Were, were those conversations mostly around federal and provincial issues or were they more all levels of uh, government? Because... I, I want to get to why you decided after running provincially, you decided, okay, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring municipally. Yeah. Um, so definitely much more in terms of federal and provincial and uh, finally municipal. It was very much in that order, which I think is also the order of a lot of people's interest in politics. Um, you know, they tend to ironically, it's the reverse in terms of the impact on your day to day life. Um, but I think, you know, it's, especially in the last, I would say with, with the advent of social media and just kind of with all that, like, I think that our, our, like, I think that federal politicians and especially the leaders and the major players have, uh, have very much kind of become celebrities, um, to an extent provincial and very rarely is a mayor a celebrity, um, you know, maybe Olivia Chow, not just as being the mayor of Toronto, but also as who her, who her husband was, right? So, and also, you know, she also had held, um, you know, party office. So, and I think that that, I think that's kind of, uh, sorry, I've gone a little bit from the, no, from the question. So when, when, um, when you were running in 2022 municipally, I want to stay, I, I want to stick on the municipal route here for yeah, a second. Yes. When you were running I, municipally, I agree with you. I, I think there's a big issue in this country where people don't understand the jurisdictional roles that ha come along with levels of government. Um, you were right. The uh, municipal governments are the closest to the people and they impact the most to the people's lives. But the average person doesn't know what who their mayor is or even who their councillors. And I, I know I, as I speak to municipal councillors across Canada, I'm hearing that story. When you were out at the doorstep, 
did people talk to you about municipal issues or were they talking to you about a range of issues? Because 2022, just at the end of the pandemic, so probably pandemic stuff was coming up. But when you got down to the crux of it, were they talking about municipal issues? Um, yes. So and to kind of because I finally remembered <laughs> what the what the original question was. Um, yeah, they all. So, I mean, my my interest in where I where I started was um, just again because I grew up talking about the different levels of politics and was mostly which is where I kind of got off on my tangent mostly grew up talking about federal politics some provincial um, very rarely was it a municipal issue that we would be talking about at home um, and that was very much the same of what I found in the community I I think you, between federal and provincial people tend to by and large kind of get what's where um but it's more that people will kind of i find that most folks will assume that that everything's provincial really <laughs> um, that was that was a lot of my that was a lot of my experience last year is you know, I'd, but again, maybe it was, maybe it's the, the danger of a single story in a, in a, in a way of, you know, I, I ran provincially and that was, and my, my big interest before um, really understanding the subtleties and the, the, the magic of municipal politics was, was provincial politics. That was where I, that was, you know, I, I got my start in federal politics and in, that was my first kind of first campaign I volunteered on the first whatever but um it was very much provincial is where I found my wheelhouse and that doesn't in an in a the way I see it is that doesn't really preclude municipal or exclude municipal politics at all right we are bound by the municipal act and a lot of what we do is impacted by the province and and vice versa as well a lot of what we do and what we what we as municipalities want in Ontario impacts provincial decisions as well. So I, I think that they do kind of play hand in hand. And that was that was a lot of the experience that I had when I was running provincially is yes, people would people would come to me with with at the doors, they would they would bring their provincial concerns. They would also bring federal concerns and they would bring a lot of municipal concerns. And it um through the conversations about municipal concerns and of where they where they should be taking those concerns and who they should be taking those concerns to um it gave me a much better understanding of what went into municipal politics and i i had an understanding but the subtleties and i started realizing that i had ideas and i had thoughts and i had opinions on what was going on municipally and that again they they really did play hand in hand and it was during the provincial election that i decided that if that wasn't to pan out i now had a whole wealth of ideas and a whole kind of basket of what i wanted to do municipally and so i said okay if this doesn't pan out i'm going to run municipally because i there's 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 too much that i that i that i want to bring to the table you get elected and you're coming up to one year and being in office. So October of 2022, you get elected. You're This is airing in October. I know we're recording a little bit earlier than October, but this is airing in October. Um, what's been Halloween. the biggest... Happy Halloween, exactly. Uh, what's been the biggest learning curve for yourself? Because being an observer of politics and actually being behind the table and actually making the decision are two different entities in itself. For you, what's been the biggest eye-opening experience as a, an elected official at the municipal level? And on the flip side of that, what would you, what advice would you give to potential candidates who are thinking about putting their name forward in a future election? Um, I think, I think that the biggest for me, the biggest I don't know if eye-opening, but the biggest learning curve that I've had is knowing when to ask for help. Um. I, you know, we're a council, we work as a council, we're supposed to be a team. And the, on the, the kind of follow up to that is the beauty of municipal politics is that while, you know, obviously everyone leans politically one way or the other in their heart of hearts, we are not elected to represent a party line. We're elected to represent the residents. And I take that very seriously. Um, and I appreciate very much that 
my council by and large takes that very seriously as well. Um, I say my council, the other counselors, the council that I serve on. The Pickering <laughs> Council. The Pickering Council, um, my pals. <laughs> So on the, no, flip, we, uh, on the yeah. flip side of that, so you're there to represent the entire town of Pickering. And now for those who don't know, it's on the uh, shore of the lakeshore. You might know it for the nuclear power plants that is Pickering is one of the biggest uh, probably uh, job economic drivers in the community. But you're elected at a ward system. So mm-hmm. you're there to elect you, the people that represent you. You represent, I think, Ward 2, correct? Yes. yes. Ward 2. But you have to make decisions, not just for Ward 2, but the entire town as a whole. How do you Mm -hmm. balance that? How do you balance, to quote Spock from Star Trek, because it's my favorite quote when asking municipal councillors, how do you outweigh the needs of the many with the needs of the few, or the needs of the few with the needs of the many? Very good question. I love Spock for that question. (laughs) Thank you, Gene Roddenberry. Um. I do you think, look at do you, do you look at every issue as a ward issue or do you look at every issue as a town issue? I do and I don't. Um Okay. I think I think every every issue is a ward issue and a, a city issue at the same time. So, I mean, I I've championed things that don't take place in my ward. I've championed things that do. Um I think you know when when someone where I say I do and I don't is that you know if, if If a resident comes with a concern and I know that another counselor that potentially like if they're from a different ward and I know that their ward counselor is better suited to answer that question because they represent that ward and therefore they have a better understanding of that ward or that neighborhood, then I'll direct them to that. Um, Oftentimes the, you know, the, the concerns are fairly similar or kind of the, again, the, the day-to-day, the, the concerns are fairly similar regardless of the ward. So it's, you know, there's, you can say, okay, like, again, I'm ward two, right? I could say, thanks for reaching out. Um, your address is actually in ward three. Um, I But they don't care about that, do they? Because they they, they've reached they, out to you because they think that you're going to be able to best address that issue, right? Sometimes, sometimes they reach out because for whatever reason, I'm the counselor that they know the name of first, sure. the first comes to mind, right? And so that's, that's, so that's part of it, right? So when you, when you circle back to somebody and you say, hey, like you're in Ward 3, happy to address your concerns. This is your city counselor. Would you prefer that, like, you know, and, and, it, and sometimes when a resident reaches out to you, they'll reach out and they'll say, they'll they'll make that clear that they're reaching out to you despite not being in your ward. And so obviously that makes it a lot easier to understand why. But again, sometimes they're just reaching out because we, so, and the other thing is in Pickering where I think kind of has the additional lens to this is that um, one, we're a dual tier system. So sometimes somebody will reach out to me with a, a regional issue or they'll reach out to one of the regional counselors with a city issue. Or the um, other one is that uh, we have discussed, um, I say we, this was pre me, but um, it's been discussed several times uh, the ward boundaries um, to change and shift. And there've been new drawings for ward boundaries. And at one point it was looking like that was gonna go through in time for the 22 election and then it didn't. So there's, you know, some people will, and, and ward two is gonna change dramatically. So sometimes somebody will reach out thinking that they are in Ward 2, but they're not, they're still in Ward 3, but because of the new, because they would have seen that new. So there's there's always that thing. There's always that as well. And then again, sometimes they just they just know who I am before another name comes to mind. Um, we have a, a regional counselor here who's particularly popular, especially on, on social media, and people love to tag him in things. And it's not you know, it's not always a regional issue. It's not always, it's not always a municipal issue and it's not always his ward. And he always, always, always answers. And he'll say, you know, take that to bylaw, please email customer care or whatever. And and he says, CC me in it, CC me in it. Like he's, he he does take an active interest and, you know, he's more visible being on social media, but if an email comes to us and it's outside of, we all- It's not like you're not going to answer it. Exactly, Um, exactly. Now, over the last year, there's been a lot of things going on in this country, affordability being one of them, the housing crisis being another one, and municipalities are dealing with the blunt of this. Um, 
I, I, I want to sort of ask about the issues of Pickering for a second, if you don't mind. But before I ask the question, I'm going to preface this question by saying this is a conversation between the counselor and myself. This is not a motion of counsel. This is not a direction of counsel. This is not a policy made at counsel. This is your opinion of the counselors. For some reason, I get a lot of emails about this question. Don't know why, but here we are. <laughs> 2023, a podcast gets emails. Shocker. Counselor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what do you see as the biggest issue facing the town of Pickering today as of recording this episode? I do think housing affordability is a big one. I think it's it's difficult to say the one big. Um, or what, what are the issues that you see that are facing the town of Pickering? I think everything, everything I think comes down to affordability. Um, I think that, you know, there's, there's a, there's, there's different issues. There's many issues facing, but I, I do think that it all comes down to affordability um, in so all respects. And so, so we, I mean, we've, you know, we've, we've met our, or we're meeting our housing pledge, um, but a lot of it is through, a lot of it is through condos and you know there's there's a place for condos and there's a space for them but um that doesn't make them affordable right and that's so that comes into a we're not seeing a lot of affordable housing um the you know the recreation services um we you know we we know we hear it from our residents all the time and and we understand as well that especially in the newer neighborhoods in further north in in Seton um, especially and and the more that comes, we don't have the facilities to meet that. We don't have the schools to meet those needs. Um, and a lot of that, like I said, comes down to affordability, whether it's what the city can afford, whether it's what the school boards can afford, whether it's what the province will allow us to afford, whether it's what, you know, it there's, there's and what, what people can afford. And through that as well, like, we you know there's there's uh does it make your job harder does it make your job harder to be a local elected leader who is on the front lines of municipal front lines of politics you, the decisions you make impact the people the most the day after you make them and that means mm -hmm. if you increase service levels if you increase taxes that means it's going to impact the people that you uh deal with your neighbors your families your friends the people who voted for you how exactly. hard is it to make those tough decisions, particularly with the sort of the umbrella of this affordability crisis that we're currently under in this country? It is. It's very difficult. And, you know, we we had a council meeting yesterday and it came up the idea of balancing taxes versus and and and, and taxpayers um, versus do we like what are what are we looking to do? Um, and I mean. Yesterday was a bit of a luckier conversation because the it we were looking to use money from reserves, so it's money that's already been allotted and allocated. But the it's it's indicative of the conversation and of the larger conversation at hand, right? And it's it's not a I mean it's not a new issue. It's always I mean I feel like that's you know since time immemorial, you know people have wanted lower taxes for more serve and and more. You services. don't say. You don't say. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, but uh, people but want low taxes, counselor. Come on, what are you talking about? I've I know. not heard what that. A, what a hot in... take! What a hot take! No one's ever said that before. But it's, Pickering's it's... unique. <laughs> Pickering's the only municipality that says. It. But you know, it's and it's not. It's not an unfair thing to want, you know. And especially, and I think it's the last year, two years, three years have really just exacerbated that. And it's it's difficult because you know the our dollar value doesn't go as far as it did, and I'm not talking about a council or municipal. I'm talking about in the in me general. as a human being in my pocket, in your pocket, you as a human being, right? Our dollar value does not our dollar does not go as far as it used to, and the the but the needs are there, and people are moving to Pickering. We hit a hundred thousand, and that's you know last okay. last year I want to say end of last year, early this year. Within the last year, we hit a hundred thousand, and that's not nothing. That's a hundred thousand people that are wanting, needing 
services, amenities, and, you know, at the same time, as people are moving here, the money isn't, or their, their dollar isn't going as far as it used to. So it's, it's a, really, it's a balancing act, and it's not easy. And it's, you know, we, we've, our, our mayor is a, a very vocal advocate of lower taxes. Um, and, you know, we're, so it, it is something that we're all looking towards, right? As the as the head of council and I mean just as a human being. Again, I also live here, right? So I also get the 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 beauty of, of lower taxes. Um you, so it's, you it's, talk yeah. you talk about the residence aspect, and I want to ask a, a poignant question here, and I apologize if it comes out of left field. Now <laughs> Over the last year, I'm assuming you've heard your fair share of criticisms about the way you voted on things. And I'm not saying that you have voted in different ways, but people have opinions. There's such thing as keyboard warriors in this country, and they seem to be active these days. Mm -hmm. How much respect do you put into the job to say, I have to listen to the people who I disagree with and agree with, but in a respectful way? Because we know, and I, I see it on full blast, all over this country municipally that the, the the respect from people to their municipal leaders is is sort of going into a weird area right now but as a municipal councillor when you go and make a decision you have to have both sides of the story whether the people who agree with you and people who don't agree with you how much respect do you put on to yourself to say you know what i'm probably going to get the answer i don't want to hear from some people but i have to as a, as an official actually listen to them I think there's a huge respect in that to to that and it's is it easy i mean it's never easy to hear an opinion <laughs> you don't like um and it's never easy to hear uh to hear a, a side of something you don't like but that goes back to one of the first things i said which is that i'm not elected to represent a party line and i'm not elected to represent my agenda i'm elected to represent what people want yes they I spoke to them at the doors, they liked what I had to say, but they liked what I had to say. They being the operative word, right? They are the ones who made that decision. And you know, we at the door, when you're three minutes with somebody, five minutes with somebody, you say a certain amount of stuff, but there's a lot that you don't say, right? So sure, they may have liked what I had to say on five items, but that doesn't mean that they knew everything about who I was. So they got an idea, but ultimately, it's all these other things that have come up since. That's when you really need to listen to people. That's when you really need to hear what the residents are saying, what the resident vibe is towards an item or something else. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll see an agenda item and I'll think, oh, okay, like I'm kind of feeling this. And then I'll, you know, talk to another counselor, which again, this is where I say it's important to learn to ask for help I'll talk to another counselor and I go well I'm kind of feeling you know option a or uh whatever and they'll we'll read through it together they'll be like no 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 or they'll be like yes 100 percent right and maybe it's just something that I've missed maybe I was skimming at the first read through and then I kind of you know my knee-jerk reaction to something and I thought okay that's kind of cool whatever and then when they say okay well hang on go back and read it more depth in more depth than I do and then I say okay but Right. So it's not, and again, I'm using a counselor, like council as an example, but it's the same thing with residents as well, as well right? Like you, I'm, I'm not going to say that every opinion should be informed off of Facebook, but it does give you an idea of what some people are saying. And it, it allows you to kind of, you know, it's, it's again, by and large of the number of people that are in Pickering, not everybody's on the internet, not everybody's on social media, but you get, an idea of what some people are thinking, right? And if it is opposed to what you are thinking, you go, okay, well, you know, that's an opinion. That is what some people are saying. So why are they saying that? Let's think about that. Let's unpack, let's dig in. Um, or sometimes I'll say, you know, I can, again, I can go to a a, a friend of mine because I'm not going to knock on a random resident's door, but a friend of mine who lives in Pickering and I'll say, hey, you know, like, have you seen the agenda for next week? Usually it's helpful if it's someone who I know is political and not just, you know, a random. Okay, random you, you, you've, you've broached a subject that I am very passionate about, but I need to <laughs> ask you about it. Do you find that there's an apathy when it comes to municipal politics? And why do you believe, if you do see it, 
Why is it there? Because the partisanship provincially and federally are there. People are engaged. People are excited. People want to be involved. When you get to the municipal t- council table, how many people randomly show up at the Pickering Town Council who are not watching it live? Two, three, possibly a handful of people, depending on what the issue is. Do you see an apathy municipally? I Yes. Um, the, as a the general big overriding statement is yes. Um, broad stroke, yes, yeah. The broad stroke, yes. I think there's a few different reasons for that. I think, um, and some of them have kind of touched on a little bit. And I think part of it is the you know the, the celebrity status of, like I said, yeah. federal politicians and you know the the high ranking provincial politicians. And so I think that there's you know there's there's more interest in that level of politics because there's more interest in those people. Um, you know, I mean when when like will yeah. will people know if you go to the grocery store will they know you're a counselor sometimes <laughs> sometimes i feel like i've just asked a question you're like oh my god chris you need to hear this what what, what happened <laughs> i uh uh well, so it, it's happened before and it, i mean it was a little it was, i was getting fish and chips one time and i place closes at eight and they had a deal on that day and I told myself that morning that I wanted fish and chips for dinner and it's 7 45 and I go oh crap I have to go get my fish and chips and I'm you know I'm just I'm hanging out at home whatever I'm just you know in like leggings and a t-shirt like not really kind of done up to go outside um and I throw my hair up in a ponytail get in my car and go and I get to the fish and chips place and there's a lineup and ask the guy in front and I say oh are you uh like are you waiting in line he goes no but one of your uh one of your compatriots is up there and I look up and there's one of the regional counselors paying for his fish and chips at the front there I'm like oh this person knows exactly who I am and I'm even in a town of a hundred thousand you can't be so so it, found- it has happened and uh someone kind of is interesting because someone this conversation came up a couple of days ago where i was telling the story to somebody um almost laughing about oh my god like well i'm so silly of me and uh and she goes yeah but that's that's got to be very common now like you know people are probably just not telling you that they know who that they recognize who you are and it's a little bit surreal to me because I also, you know, and then I kind of almost want to take back my broad stroke. Yes. And say, yes, dot, dot, dot. Cause I, you know, I guess maybe people know council, but they're still not really paying attention to the issues. And I think that that kind of is the second part of it where people will, you know, part of the apathy towards municipal politics is that, you know, garbage pickup isn't sexy. You know, wastewater services is not come on (laughs) parks and rec. Like, you know, it's not, it's not as, uh, as as, 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 right. Or zoning bylaws, right. Like it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't pique the interest in the way that an international issue would, or, um, a provincial bill that is, does whatever x y z and oh no and what it's gonna impact and etc right so you know there's there's i think that it's it's a huge element of that that plays into it is just that the issues are being more of the day-to-day issues they're smaller scale they're more intricate there's there's you know if you take a provincial bill and you unpack it there's going to be a lot of that nitty-gritty stuff as well but the the larger part of it is bigger it's bolder yeah. it's more in your face whereas again parks and rec the you know the tree the tree such, trimming bylaw doesn't get that much play in the national news right. these days grass exactly grass grass cutting on on municipal curbs like that's not gonna be what go, oh right i i'm so glad i woke up to hear about this you know for some people absolutely hundred percent. And I think that's why we're municipal politicians, but for other people, you know, there's, you know, the, the few hundred people that watch the council meetings. And then again, in a city of a hundred thousand, that's not a massive number comparatively. Um, over the last year, you've probably had people stop you or probably people email your office asking for help. 
And mm -hmm. you know that municipalities don't have an, un an unlimited supply of money. They have to balance their budget every year. The only level of government that has to balance their budget, shockingly. But you have people who want things increased, improved. And outside of budget cycles, outside of budget meetings, which I'm assuming you're about to go through, or if you haven't already started going through right now, um, you might have to say no to people. And you may have to say, unfortunately, we cannot do that because it's just not in our purview, but it's also just would cost too much money and you wouldn't want to see your taxes go up by 10, 15%. How do you see yourself in the role as counselor in making sure everyone's voice is heard and speaking for everyone and not just the majority of people? So it's a flip on that question I asked earlier. I, um... I think, hmm. so when, you know, if someone emails and they say, you know, I want this or that and I need help, there are, there. I mean, there's a whole set, people see us, right? People see the seven of us, but there's a whole staff, there's a whole corporation working behind us. Um, and they, they do incredible work. Um, and I cannot sing their praises enough um for you know the the and especially as being a newer counselor for the support that I had um in the beginning especially when I needed help for everything not knowing if something was traffic or engineering or whatever um but uh the reason I say that is because when someone emails you that that concern if it's a municipal issue if it's not you redirect them to the level of government yeah respond and then take them to the level of government that they're looking for if it is a municipal issue it there is a department that will know what to do with that information whether it's yes or no or yes but or no and or whatever um so the if someone emails me with something i usually first course of action would be to go to that department before responding to the resident find out what the backstory is why are they like why are they asking for this what is the feasibility of this is there a, a history of this being asked not necessarily by this person but just in general etc cetera, etc cetera. get that back again especially as a newer counselor there are things that have happened long before me and so on so you know it's sometimes even if it's not what that resident is looking for you can find a you can find a happy medium, you can find a solution, you can find a, a not now, but thank you for this. This is a great idea. And we'll be sure to look at, look at the possibility of including that in the budget next year. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to give a, a general kind of answer because the, I feel like I've said this a lot now, but the, like throughout this interview, but the, the thing with, again the thing with municipal politics is that it is so so there is so much kind of nitty-gritty and there is so yeah there's so there's much a lot of intricate workings actually. in the municipal government that not a lot yeah. of people understand or even realize that when you actually open up the book there's about twenty thousand chapters instead of the seven chapters that you think that are just the yeah. counselors right yeah there's uh, a lot of yeah there's a lot of a lot of nuance a lot of subtlety a lot of intricacy um i want to turn to my last subject now and it's my favorite subject because i love tourism i love it i love it i love it i think canadians should do more of it in canada i think we should be visiting our own backyard instead of going to cancun not saying cancun's not great if they want to sponsor the show that's great but right now i'm talking <laughs> about municipal politics and municipalities what are some of the hidden gems in your community that as a tourist they should see if they come to the town of pickering um i think the waterfront is gorgeous um the the nautical village ward two um <laughs> uh, nautical village Dameless is plug. it's um it's just it's a it's i do think it's a bit of a hidden gem it's just a gorgeous place to be i think pickering really really the the best parts of pickering are the outdoor parts so like the waterfront is amazing it's beautiful the 
the Ward 1 side, so the West Shore, uh, recently just had a big kind of renovation. Um, and there's a, a new boardwalk. There's outdoor areas. There's a whole park set up there. Now it's just, it's stunning. Um, highly recommend. Like I said, Nautical Village is lovely. Next year, we are we're going to be redoing the east side, so the Nautical Village side, so the east shore of the uh, waterfront, redoing the boardwalk that washed away a few years ago, um, adding in some some kind of more elements to it to draw to drive. Um, the way that our our shores are set up is that the east shore, the the Nautical Village, is is more of the the retail node, the kind of come out, be out, come shop, dine, play, et cetera. And then the West Shore is more of the uh, the conservation space, the greenery, the et cetera, the um, that. Um, I think the, and uh, just to give a little, uh, to kind of, you know, one for each ward. Um, I think our, our hamlets are lovely. I don't know that that's, tourism thing by any means but the hamlets are lovely to just kind of you know just enjoy just be there they're peaceful not the the pickering museum i think is highly underrated um it's also going through some uh some renovations some we've gotten some grants uh to be able to um update some of the buildings um so have, Can i just say know, that the hamlets and pickering I'm just going to sort of do a shameless plug here because you mentioned it at the top of the hour or top of the show. Um, best trick or treating in Durham region is the Hamlets in Pickering. Not saying that's the reason I got it. I was, I was a big kid growing up, but I'm just saying <laughs> that if you want good trick or treats for Halloween kids, go to the Hamlets in Pickering. I'll have to take my nephew there this year. I've never gone trick or treating in the in the hamlets. Go out it because they give the big know. size. Unless they have unless they have stopped since I was there in the early nineties. Go best. I, I I grew up in uh I grew up in Glendale, so it's a a neighborhood of Pickering, but it's very much part of the part of the urban the suburban urban. So uh, that was that was that was my kind of trick or treating experience. But so I never, I never made it up. To, and by the time I was old enough to drive up to the hamlet, so you know, it wasn't socially acceptable to trick or treat anymore. Oh, it's always so, socially acceptable. It's all. <laughs> um, I'm going to end on this. Like adult in my thirties, I'm sure I can go trick or treating again. I'm just, you're just doing a service as a counselor, going around asking residents what they feel. Um, I want to end on my. So I also want to do a shameless plug in terms of again, I don't know how much like tourism it would be, but a shameless plug for uh the Common Ground Garden, which is also up in Ward Three, and it's a um a, a community garden initiative, and um periodically they do uh they do they so they sell their um some of the folks that that have that that use that they they sell the the products that they have um or that come out of that garden and it's uh it's a really it's a really cool initiative and it's it's on the federal lands um so it's land that's leased like and then they use this um they they do the community garden with it um and then their harvest season is is coming up so Ooh. more more things to buy coming up from the common ground garden million dollar question time and counselor uh, i i want your pitch what makes the pickering such a unique place to live to work and to raise a family i mean i'm biased no uh it's, every counselor is it's such a it's just such a it's such a nice place to be i there's so much there's so much diversity here and there's so much there's so much variety and there's you know there's there's diversity in 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 the people in the land in the things to do in the you know the, the in the space you know you're 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 never more than a 15 to 20 minute drive from anything that you want like You've got the water. You've got the. You want the water. You've got the water. You want. You want Toronto. You've got Toronto. You want Oshawa. You've got Oshawa. You want like so. You can find. And the reason I specifically say Toronto and Oshawa is because they are both cities and bigger cities, and they 
offer, you know, if you want kind of the downtown vibe without going downtown, you've got Oshawa. If you want the big, whatever, any show you want to see, great, go to Toronto. If you want a farm, if you've got a farm five minutes north of here, you've got a farm. Like there's, Oxford, there's, yeah. so yes, well, North Pickering is, is full of farms, right? That's right, yeah. As of, as of last week, we can officially say you want the drop lands, you've got the drop lands back. Like there, there's, there's so much, so much to, to do. And I feel like, Pickering is so underrated in in what it has to offer um and maybe it's a you know a a thing of when you live here you don't you know you take it for granted but so many times you know people will people will complain about this or that or whatever but when it comes down to it nobody wants to actually nobody wants to actually leave Pickering when they when they you know complain about time to move people love it here hey, i i, I, reason and they I, stay here for reason. I spent a few uh, years just traveling through pickering a lot which just because it was a fun experience for myself um but i i enjoy it and I, I every time i get back i always drive by i'm like i used to at least to like date someone in that community <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, uh, it's just so it's so peaceful and on a on a saturday morning you just walking around and hear the birds chirping and the breeze is blowing and the sun is shining and people are driving around and they're happy and they're walking their dogs and they're, you know, they're walking home with their Starbucks coffee. It's just, there's honestly no place I'd rather be. Just it's Counselor, so... I want to thank you so much for this. This has been an honor to sit down with you and chat to you about yourself and the town of Pickering. It's always great to get people who are involved municipally. So thank for me. City of Pickering. City of Pickering. I've been calling it town the entire time. That's right. Oh my god. It's the town of okay. Ajax and City of Pickering. Oh my god. That is a okay. Yeah, you should have corrected me way before. I apologize. I <laughs> the city of Pickering is an amazing city. You are a city councillor, not a town councillor. Thank you so much, Mara, for doing this. Greatly Thank appreciate you. it. And I apologize to all now the now the mayor won't come on the show. <laughs> like <laughs> he called our community a town. Thank you so much, Mara, can, for doing this. You can this. come and correct the record. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Now, your continued interest in delving deep into the issues that shape our communities across Canada is both inspiring and essential to our mission of making municipality issues matter again. Now, as we wrap up, I hope that you've gained valuable insights into the intricate worlds of municipal politics and municipal government from today's interview. Now, if you found this dialogue as engaging as I did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button today. By subscribing, you're not just staying up to date with this show, Cross Border Interviews, but all of our shows, Municipal Affairs with Chris Brown, Political Trenches, Local Government at Work. But you're also playing an intricate role, a vital role, if that, in supporting our endeavors to bring you more meaningful content like you saw today. Now, we couldn't embark on this journey without your support. Creating content that sheds light on the issues affecting municipalities requires dedication and resources. Now, if you believe in our mission of making municipal issues prominent on a national stage, please consider visiting our support page conveniently linked in the show notes or by visiting crossborderinterviews.ca and clicking on that Support Us Now page. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in ensuring that we can deliver the kind of content like today's interview you've come to expect from us. Once again, thank you for being part of the Cross Border Interviews community. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, keep talking.